Hi, this is Dr. Corey Glenn, and I want to show you what I believe to be an, a new and improved way of doing full arch cases in Blue Sky Plan. And so the first thing you need to know is it always depends on a really nice duplicate denture. Um, I've got techniques that I show on my YouTube channel of how we use a, a standard lab appliance box to do a clamshell impression of a patient's denture and um, by using that we can make this impression and then we can pour it up in acrylic. Here's the acrylic that I use. It's from Annex Dent North America and it's just a 12% barium sulfate acrylic. It sets up fairly quickly so it's really nice to be able to to do this in a single sitting while the patient is waiting for you. So the way we'll do this is that we'll duplicate the patient's denture and, and bear in mind this needs to be a denture with the teeth in the position that you hope for their implant prosthesis to uh, end up in. So if the patient has an existing denture that's not ideal, you need to start first with a denture that the teeth are in the ideal position aesthetically and prosthetically. Uh, but once we have that duplicated, and then you need to do a reline in the mouth with PV, uh, PVS so that you get a really nice accurate fit against the tissue. Once you've done your reline impression inside of the radiographic denture, you're going to place some flowable composite blebs onto the denture surface. Um, you could also use little radiographic glass beads. Um, you just need something that can function as a radiographic marker on the exterior surface of the denture. So you'll scan your patient with the radiographic denture in the mouth and then take the, the denture out and you're going to pour it up in stone as you can see here and make sure when you pour this that you do create a land area all around the denture. We're going to allow that to set and then once we uh, have that model set we're going to come back and place some flowable composite blebs on the land area. Um, these are going to be the markers that are used as a bridge to uh, get the STL model uh, merged correctly. So as you can see here We've got our composite blebs on the denture. We've got composite blebs on the land area of the cast. Now before separating this model, you need to go ahead and optically image this model to include all of the denture surface and all of the land area that you see here. It's very important that you pick up all of these markers. Now once you've separated the denture, you're going to go ahead and create another optical model and this time we're just going to create an optical model of the cast that you see on the left. It's got the tissue surface here and we're going to make sure that we fully pick up all these markers that are in the land area once again. Now here's the actual case that we're going to be planning and the first thing I want you to notice is that in the 3D view you can see that that radiographic denture shows up very very nicely. Um, if you come up here and look in the cross-sectional window you can see that the uh, tooth positions show up very nicely as you can scroll through you see the radiographic markers right there and so this is very clear it shows up very densely and uh, makes it very easy to uh, plan your implant positions now just for the sake of time I've already planned the implant positions and if you look right here you can see again in the 3d view exactly where things will emerge And what you're looking for is to make sure, if at all possible, that you're emerging through occlusal surfaces or lingual to incisal edges. And as you can see here, we've been able to place seven implants um, that all fulfill those requirements. So now we've got our implant positions planned. Really, the only thing we need to accomplish now is to be able to make a guide. Now, you wouldn't expect to be able to make a guide on this surface. It's got far too much scatter and distortion. So what we need is a way to import the tissue surface model so that we can generate a guide that will put the implants in the proper position. So we'll turn these off and I'll show you how we can accomplish that. Now, I've already imported these STL surfaces, but you would just go through your standard procedure of importing STL surface. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this data merge for the sake of demonstrating. So here's the window that comes up when we import our first STL surface. 
Um, now the one that you want to import is the first one that you created that has the denture surface and all the land area here. And I didn't do a perfect job of scanning this. That's okay, as you'll see in just a moment. And what we're going to do is just go through our standard merge process, just like we would do on a dentate case. We're going to go ahead and pick common points. And these dentures show up so nicely in the scan that you could actually do it just based on tooth position. Now once we've merged the surfaces, we do want to go back and double check that we've got an accurate stitch. So I do that in the coronal view, which you can see right here. The outside surface is very closely approximating uh, the radiographic denture. There are a few spots that you can see like right here where it's off. And again, that is a problem with the, the original STL I created. Um, if you were really doing this case, you would want to go back and correct that. You can also analyze it in the cross-sectional view. So as you scroll through, you ought to see that the teeth are falling within this line. And as you see, they do follow it very nicely. So now that we've got our, our first STL imported, now we need to find a way to get the tissue surface imported. So you would import your second STL, and again, I already have that done, but now we need to align it. We're not going to choose align uh, on this one. We're going to say align to model, because that's going to allow us to align to the model that we just imported previously. So as you can see, we have our first STL, and now we can merge it with our second STL. And here's where it becomes clear why we did those radiographic markers in the land area. Because as you can see, you, these show up just perfectly. There's no question about what you need to stitch to. These are going to match up very, very nicely. And it allows you to work off solely optical models as opposed to doing um, you know, a scan appliance and having to import... Uh, more comb beam data which is never as clear uh, this is going to be a piece of cake to stitch so we'll go ahead and begin stitching this okay so we've got seven points chosen that should be enough to stitch that and once again, if you look in our 3D view, you can see that we've got all three layers merged now. Let's go back and double check our stitch and make sure it did it properly. And this is exactly what you want to see. You want to see the uh, tissue surface very closely approximating the internal of the denture and the tissue surface of the actual patient. So scroll through and double check that in the coronal view, which looks good. We'll also double check it in the cross section view. And again, you can see it following the tissue surface very well. So now that we've done that and we've got a good match, um, we can turn off all the other surfaces and we can know that our tissue surface has been merged well with the comb beam data and so at this point it again becomes very easy to create the guide we already know where our implants are going to be emerging from and you would go about designing your guide in the the typical way um, you would plot your points around the periphery define where you want the extent of your guide to go to 
and then allow the software to process it and again I've already done this but what you would end up with is a guide very much like this you could create little windows so that you can see that it's fully seated you want it to extend up into the vestibule so this should be a very nice easy surgery because we know this is going to exactly fit against the tissue surface and so long as it's stable and your patient has enough ridge that you can push this on and keep it in place without it wobbling around um, you could do this as a flapless surgery and it should be very simple now soft tissue guides are inherently going to move a little bit so if you don't have any room for error you might want to consider going to a bone level guide um, it's a good bit more complicated to do that so um, hopefully the patient has enough bone and you can take this approach with it you could always do just initial pilot drills if you don't want to commit to the full uh, diameter osteotomy um, to find your pilot holes with the trajectory and then flap everything open and either do bone expansion um, ridge splitting however you wanted to approach it in a minimal bone situation so I hope you found that helpful Stay tuned for more techniques on the Blue Sky Bio software, and we'll see you next time.